It's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Our applause is unto him. So if you didn't clap, can we clap together to his praise? You get all of the glory, Lord, all of the honor. We worship and we adore you. And so, Lord, as much as you have brought us here, we thank you that you give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. We thank you, Lord, that you've already said that the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. So we don't think that we're here by accident, but you have led us here. So now, Lord, may we have a heart to receive so that we're not just hearers, but we are doers of your word. I commit myself unto you as your vessel. I thank you that it's not human wisdom on display, but it is a demonstration of your Holy Spirit's power. That men's faith does not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of you, almighty God. So I declare in Jesus' name that not only are broken hearts healed, but salvation comes to the lost. I declare in Jesus' name that you comfort those who are mourning and console those who are mourning in Zion. I thank you, Lord, that you give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that what we hear today will truly change our mind and transform our hearts so that we're aligned with you to give you glory no matter what's going on in life. In Jesus' name, all of the believers said, Amen. God bless you. Well, we started a couple of weeks ago in a new series entitled The Law of Faith. The Law of Faith. And so our first lesson was entitled Learning Faith. From that teaching, we highlighted three points. Number one, that the law of faith or faith is information from God that he expects me to act on. Can we say that together? If faith is information from God that he expects me to act on. Let's say it again so we're together. Faith is information from God that he expects me to act on. Then we found out that faith connects the believer to God's presence, God's power, God's provision, as well as his protection. Our last point in that lesson that I want to highlight is that faith, the law of faith, works 100% of the time for those who will work it. It is an equal opportunity law because the law of faith trumps natural laws every time. Somebody shout out every time. time. The last week we came and we found out that all things are possible. That in the same way that aerodynamics, that is an aircraft, can break or cut across the law of gravity, so God is not subject to natural laws. But he has made all things possible to the one who will believe. I was reminded of John chapter 6, there in verse 29, it says that the people had been following Jesus, and so he fed them. Then Jesus went missing, so they went looking for him. When they found him, they asked him, where were you, Jesus? And Jesus said, you're only following me because you ate the loaves. And so then they felt convicted, and they said, well, what must we do to do the works of God? And he said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. And so today our message is entitled, Choose to Believe. Choose to believe, for this is the work of of God. To believe then is to accept what God says as true, as right, as reliable, and as dependable. But here's the thing, we each individually must choose. It is not innate to us, it's not even an automatic response for us, but it is a decision that we must make individually, a decision to believe. And our ability to believe will be shown by our actions and by our behaviors. See, our actions and our behaviors reveal what we truly believe. So I'd like to lay a foundation for us by looking at the scriptures. We're going to see how Israel actually showed themselves as believers and what they actually believed in. Because if we can learn from their example, then we don't have to repeat their error. 
So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 1. Moses is narrating what Israel did when God made them a promise. God promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. The people said, well, can we send spies out to see the land? And God said, sure, go send the spies out, see what the land looks like. I'm giving it to you. They send the, the spies out, and Moses is now narrating how they responded. Remember, what I believe will be seen by my actions and by my behaviors. There in verse 21, it picks up Moses talking, Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. In other words, people, go on and get the land. God has promised it just for you. The people respond. Believing is based on my actions and my behaviors. It reveals what I really believe. And so there in verse 25, it picks up where the people say, they also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands, that's from the land they went to spy out, and brought it down to us. And they brought back word to us saying, it is a good land which the Lord our God is giving us. Nevertheless, you would not go up. So now Moses is identifying their actions and their behaviors. You would not go up, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you complained in your tents and said, because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up, they said. Then they continue with, our brethren, who? Our brethren, who? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of Anakim there. So what's happening? God has given to them a promise of a land that flows with milk and honey, and now the people have, are listening to the voice of their brethren, the voice of naysayers and doubters. And then it continues where Moses tells them what he said to them. Do not be terrified or afraid of them. The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son and all the way that you went until you came to this place. In other words, Moses outlines for them. He says, don't you remember? We, we left Egypt on dry ground through the Red Sea. And the people who came behind us, they all drowned through that same path. Don't you remember when you were hungry and we cried out to God and he caused manna to come down from heaven? And when you got tired of eating the manna, he caused the fowl of the air to come so you could pluck as many feathers as you want. Don't you remember when you were thirsty and he caused water to come out? Don't you remember? And so he looks at them and he says in verse 32, yet for all that... You did not believe the Lord your God who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tents, to show you the way you should go in the fire by night and in the day or in the cloud by day. God promised Israel a land that flows with milk and honey. And yet Israel, their brethren, told them that it was impossible. We don't want to go there it's not going to work for us. So here we have a people with two options, the promise of God or the voice of their brethren. They had an opportunity to choose who they would believe. By their actions and their behaviors, we see that they chose to believe the naysayer and the doubter. By their actions and their behavior, they chose to believe the facts. They chose to believe their feelings above their ability to believe God. And then we can find in Psalm 78 where God outlines his thoughts on the matter. 
how he perceived their actions and their behavior. There in verse 40, the latter part, it reads, how often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. That's really interesting because in our first lesson, we, if you remember, we found out that when Jesus went to his hometown, he could not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. And so it is here, Israel limited what God could do for them because of their unbelief, which means the same is true for each of us. No matter what we're facing, if we are unable to believe, we limit the God who, yes, has full control. Yes, can do anything. But he is limited when we're a people who cannot or will not believe. In the same way that God gave Israel a promise of a land that flows with milk and honey, he has given to each one of us great and precious promises. He's promised to us that he would give to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He promised to each one of us that there is no good thing that he will withhold from you who walk uprightly before him. He's promised to each one of us life and that life in abundance. And with all of the promises that we have from God, we also have an opportunity to choose. We can choose to receive the promises that God has made to us, or we can choose to listen to the naysayer in our ear. That is those people who come and tell us what we cannot have, what we cannot be, and what we cannot do. We can choose to believe all of the promises God has made for us, or we can listen to the voice of contradiction that comes in to counter everything that God has promised. We can choose to believe the promises of God, or we can choose to believe our feelings that scream how it's impossible. We can choose to believe the promises of God or we can choose to believe the facts that dissuade and discourage us from even trying. Each one of us has an opportunity to choose. We have two options to choose and believe what God promised or listen to the voice of the naysayer, the doubter, the facts, the the contradictions and so on and so forth. I'm here to encourage you to choose to believe. Choose the promise. Choose to accept what God said. Accept it as true. Accept it as right. Accept his word as reliable. Accept his word as dependable for your life. Choose the promise. And so there are two things that I want you to keep in mind as you walk through life as his son and as his daughter. Number one, what I believe establishes the boundaries in my life. What I believe establishes the boundaries for my life. When I walk into a room, typically there are four walls. There's a wall to my right, a wall to my left, a wall in front and a wall behind. These walls represent boundaries. They tell me how far I can go because I can't walk through a wall. The ceiling, it is a boundary. It tells me how high I can go in life. It is a boundary because I can't reach the ceiling. These are real boundaries. It's not a figment of my imagination. They are real. I can't go through it. But here's the thing. With Israel, there were real boundaries. They were really giants in the land. It wasn't imaginary. They really were giants. It wasn't imaginary. The city was fortified up high. It wasn't imaginary. There were real boundaries where they were afraid. They were afraid and in the natural, they could not see a way. And in your life, there are real boundaries in life. There are boundaries. You have not gotten the education 
to get into that position. It's a real boundary. There's another boundary that says I don't have the experience to even try for that position. That's a boundary. There are boundaries that say you're not the right gender. You're not from the right ethnicity for an opportunity. These are boundaries. There are boundaries that say you don't have enough money. You really are in the red. Those are real. It's not imaginary. But here's the thing. God doesn't make promises based on boundaries. He makes promises despite the boundaries. And so each of us can choose whether we're going to believe the promise or we're going to believe the boundaries that are in front of us. And if we choose to believe the boundaries, the boundaries will always block us and God can't do anything to help us. And so if we choose to defy the boundaries, that's what the law of faith dictates. That we don't just look at the boundaries and say, oh, well, I guess not for me. Oh, well, I guess I'll never have it. I guess I'll never do it. I guess I'll never be it. Oh, well, no. We defy boundaries. That's what the law of faith speaks to. When Israel was told there's a land flowing with milk and honey, the brethren, the majority said, we cannot go in. They looked at their boundaries and decided they, that the boundaries were strong enough to block them. But Caleb, he looked at the boundaries and he chose to believe God. We are well able to go into the land. It was a response to the boundaries versus the promise of God. And that's what it means to defy. To defy means to refuse to comply, to refuse to submit to the boundaries that are around us. Caleb refused to comply. He refused to submit. And while all of Israel could not go into the promised land, he and Joshua were able to walk into the promised land because they defied the boundaries. Fast forward into the New Testament. We can see in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, a man comes to Jesus and he says, I need you to heal my son. He's been mute and he has seizures. And Jesus says there in verse 23, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. He said, from childhood. He said, what? from childhood. So clearly the person standing in front of Jesus, along with the dad, is not a child. But this is a person who's been dealing with seizures for a majority of his life. And Jesus says to him, or the, the father continues, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible. In other words, it's not about whether if I can do anything. This is about if you can believe. Because if you can believe, nothing will be impossible for you. See, when Jesus is presented with the issues, he doesn't, it doesn't matter to him that this man has dealt with this his majority of his life. And the same is true in each of our lives. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with chronic or long-term conditions. Jesus is able. It doesn't matter if you've got facts and feelings that contradict what the promise says. Jesus can handle it. It doesn't matter if the naysayer and the doubter is coming against your life. Jesus can handle it. So I defy those things. I'm not moved by it. I'm not going to comply to my boundaries. I'm not going to submit to my boundaries. But now I'm going to let my actions and my behaviors represent a man or a woman who believes. Faith, the law of faith defies boundaries because if you can believe all things are possible for you come on say if i can believe, I can believe. All, things all things are possible for me number two the boundaries others believe about me cannot limit me 
the boundaries that others believe about me, it cannot limit me. I want to focus on one boundary that's found in many of our lives, and that's this boundary called human limitations. Human limitations. They are, human limitations are conditions, restrictions, weaknesses, and perceptions that keep a person from a quality of life or from achievement. That's human limitations. I want us to look now at David because David addressed human limitations in his life and he came out victorious. So let's see how David handles human limitations. There in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're reading verse 33. And Saul said to David, and Saul said to David, and what? Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. So Saul said to David what he didn't think David could handle. He put human limitations on David's life and he said what's not possible. But God did not tell David that that was impossible. As long as you can believe, it doesn't matter what other people say about you. As long as you can believe, then it doesn't matter what the people perceive about you. As long as you can believe, then it doesn't matter how people see your weaknesses. As long as you can, as long as I can believe, come on, as long as I can believe, then all things are possible for me. And so we see where David responds in verse 34. It says, but David said to Saul, somebody say David. David, David said to Saul. So Saul said to David what he can't do, and now David Response to Saul with what he can do. David says what he's able to do because he believes. Remember, our actions and our behaviors reveal what we truly believe. And so if you cannot do anything, you can certainly say something. And David didn't mind saying something. David said to Saul, verse 34, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, well, he will be like one of them, seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. See, David had to put some attitude in there. He didn't just let Saul just get off and tell him what he can't do. I struck the lion. I struck the bear. So this Philistine will be like one of those. See, we got to get some attitude when we're walking the law of faith. You need to be able to say, I got one car. I can get another car with this same credit. I got one house. Then I can just get me another house. You have to have attitude. I may have lost that job, but I can get me another job. My God is able. He supplies my needs. Nobody is provided. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. You have to have attitude because David not only says one thing, but he goes two things. So Saul says one thing and David said, let me make sure it's clear. So then in verse 37, it reads, moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will. Is that confidence? Yeah. He will. See, sometimes you need to look at, he will pay this bill. Yeah. He will take care of me. Yeah. He will watch over his word to perform. He will. Somebody shout out, he will. He will. David said, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. He believed, so it really didn't matter what Saul had to say. When people have spoken over your life, what is impossible, 
You have to have a decision, a made up mind to double down and declare over your life what God has said. And remember when you do that his promises for you are yes and amen which means you really don't have to listen to what somebody else is saying about your life. Oh, I want to help you. And Saul said to David, what can he say now? Well, go. <laughs> Verse 37, go and let the Lord be with you. <laughs> so you got to shut down the naysay on your life. Do you know I, the God who was with me when I was born? He was with me when I was 10. He was with me when I was 15. He was with me when I was 20. He's been with me all this time, so he's not going to leave me now. Are we together? My God is the one who's taking care of me. Who, who are you? So, somebody point and say, who, who are you? Who are you? Yeah, you need to say to your naysayer, who are you? <laughs> and so when you choose to believe the limits that others believe about you, will mean nothing. That just like Saul, it means nothing because when you show that our God is faithful, all they can do is say, go. <laughs> we'll go ahead and let's see what God does. And God will always show himself strong in behalf of the one who will believe. And so the question for us is this, do you believe? Do we have any believers in the house. Do you believe? I choose to believe. I choose to believe. Come on, say, I choose to believe. I choose to believe. I could doubt, but I choose to believe. I could wonder, but I choose to believe. I could cry, but I choose to let the joy of the Lord be my strength. I could fall apart, but I choose to stand. And after I've done everything, stand therefore. I could fall apart, but I choose to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I choose to receive and believe every promise God has made for my life. It is a choice. And every one of us gets to make it to accept what he said as true, as right, as reliable and dependable. David slew the Goliath. He slew the Philistine because he knew how to defy human limitations. There in chapter 16, it tells us how when, when David's daddy sent all the boys up to war, he told David, you just stay in the, sh in the field. You just stay there. That was a human limitation because when he wanted something, he said, run this errand. Run this errand to your brothers. He didn't think he was good enough to go to war. That was a human limitation. David took the stuff to his brothers, but he surveyed the situation. <laughs> he defied human limitations. I didn't come here just to bring you some food. I came to see what's going on. That's defying human limitations. His brother saw him looking, and he said, what are you doing here? You're such a nuisance. His you would think your brother would encourage you. You would think your brother would say, Oh, I'm glad to see you. Come on in, you can handle it. But no, his brother said, you're just a nuisance. Why don't you just go on back home? But David defied human limitations and said, you don't have to believe in me. I'm still going to see the king. And walked up to Saul and said, I'm here to slay your problem. <laughs> That's called defying human limitation. The army said he was too young. But David defied human limitations and said, I slayed the lion and the bear. I can slay this Philistine. Military training, he had none. But he didn't worry about it. He defied human limitations and he was ready to go to war. He compared, they compared him to Goliath. But he wasn't moved about the comparison. He defied human limitations. This day, I'll have your head today. See, that's called attitude. This day, I will have another job. This day, this bill will be paid. This day, I declare all my needs met. This day, this body is healed. I'm getting up. I got to have a made-up mind that what God said is what I'm choosing to believe. Because in the same way that David 
could defy human limitations and then run towards the boundary. He ran towards Goliath. He didn't stand there and wait for Goliath to come. No, he ran towards it. I encourage you, run towards the boundary. Defy it and declare what God said. I am well able to walk through. I can run through truths and leap over walls. I declare I'm the head and not the tail. I declare everything that God said for my life is true. It is reliable. It is dependable and I choose to believe it. In the same way, our limitations are God's opportunities. If you will defy the limitations, you will see God show you an opportunity. God bless you. When you accept God's word as true, as right, as reliable, as dependable, you will see God's presence God's power, God's provision, and God's protection in your life. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed.